Hello and welcome to a new video. In this video I will mount a Tisamienis uh, species. It's a stick insect, smaller species of stick insect. This one was bred in captivity and died a natural death. It's just old age. Fortunately, all life stops at some point. I was fortunate enough to receive this specimen from a breeder after it died, which is very sad, but that's what happens. Now at least it can get a second life, it can be preserved, it can be displayed in a museum afterwards. So what I will do here is not that pretty, but it's definitely an efficient method. It's a new method that I applied. It will leave a bigger mark on your insect, but basically what you do is cut the insect open in the middle. You can also do this on the side, so that you fold it open like a box. But that will make it a bit more difficult. I would say that's a little bit more advanced. Although maybe for some people it will go a lot better than for others. I'm also just a person doing what he thinks might work. So, especially for the video it works very well. Because you can see everything that's inside. And you can see how it's removed. Which parts let loose easily from the exoskeletons. Which parts are a bit harder. And... That's what you will see. So after you finish cutting the insect completely from the very tip of the abdomen to the very top of the thorax, you can open the insect with your fingers. You don't need anything else. You might have tweezers that are open in rest position that you have to force close to keep it open. You can do that. I'm not doing that. Here I will use needles simply for the sake of the video. It will leave holes in the bottom of the exoskeleton. In a display case, you won't see this. If you want a complete three-dimensional structure for study, then this won't work. Then I prefer um, the method of cutting open on the side of the specimen and folding it open with your fingers or some weight or tweezers as I said earlier and keep it open like that. So here you see all the inner workings of the insect, you see the organs, you see the connective tissue, you see the eggs, you see the muscles, you see the nerves and there are some more tissues but barely visible. The nerves even are barely visible in these smaller specimens. So I prefer to take out the organs first, the stomach, the intestines and things like that, than the eggs. Simply because when you rupture the stomach or the intestines while removing other tissues, it will make a big mess. And when you remove the eggs, it just makes a lot of space, makes it clearly visible what's all going on inside. And if your specimen is fresh, this one is frozen because I didn't immediately have time to mount it. The eggs cannot hatch anymore, the eggs are dead, they are frozen dead. But if your specimen is fresh, you can hatch these eggs. Like you would hatch freshly laid eggs. And these yellow eggs, they are underdeveloped eggs. You can throw them away, you don't need that, they won't, uh, they won't hatch or anything. But I like to preserve them on ethanol for display... Um, Displaying in a museum, for education, for schools, or people who have interest. And ethanol works very well for that. Even still can be studied under a microscope. The connective tissue in this specimen didn't let go that easily. But sometimes it lets go in one go, which you might see in future videos. The muscle tissue in the legs, it's hard to remove. Try to remove as much as possible, but don't damage your specimen. And when you cut the specimen, I forgot to mention, try to cut in the most shallow possible angle. Because if you cut deep, you will cut the organs and you will make a big mess that you have to clean up afterwards. And yeah, so the eggs, the um, underdeveloped eggs, you can even keep those in epoxy resin, which is what I did as well for some specimens. And display it to people, children can hold it. You can bring it to schools, it's 
perfect actually but less suitable for studies so you see the insect unfortunately lost some color with cleaning with paper towel if you wanted to lose less color um, try to be very very careful with paper towel don't put any pressure on it just lay it lay it in the insect and leave it with that for a few minutes take it out again for this video that would have taken quite a long time once it's done I put some paper towel inside of the insect and I will start to position it. The original specimen had darker coloration than as what it is now because on the inside of the exoskeleton are the pigments of the insect. Not in the exoskeleton itself, a bit, but most of it is on the inside of it. And I removed it by removing the organs and all the tissue and then cleaning it too uh, harshly with the paper towel. It was the first time mounting uh, Tisamina species for me. But I have similar experience, experiences with Exatosoma. And if you want to keep dark coloration, you can use paper towel that you gave some coloration, or you can even paint the inside of the exoskeleton. If you want to keep coloration perfect, I would advise freeze drying your specimens. Most people don't have access to a freeze dryer. You can also freeze dry specimens by keeping it in the freezer for six months up to a year maybe, depending on your freezer, depending on the dryness of your freezer, but all the ice inside the specimen at some point will sublimate into gas and won't return to a specimen that's frozen. And that will preserve the coloration very well. It might damage the specimen slightly in other ways. Um, freezing it will make it very brittle. If you move it, parts might break. Also, I have a feeling the three-dimensional structure of the insect doesn't stay exactly the same when it's frozen for a long time. In a freeze dryer, this is not a problem. And then you would mount it like a specimen that you import from another country which is already dried and chemically preserved and positioning the insect is like any other insects just use needles to position the legs and the antenna maybe certain parts of the body in the position that you want them to be and then you let the specimen dry the semina species didn't need long it dried in a week it's very thin exoskeleton um, bigger specimens might need up to a month or six weeks to nicely dry. So that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it, liked it. Um, feel free to give a like, subscribe, and I will see you at the next video.